It's impossible to capture such a beautiful and adventurous soul like my best friend and brother Drake. He reminds me of his love for the abnormal, from exotic trinkets to cheeses, and someone he referred to as Dr. Pignatius Wright. <laughs> Anyone who knows Drake or has been to his house knows it was not strange to see a chicken running past your feet in his backyard or a large pig eating his favorite fruits and precious grass. <laughs> the following messages between us would be strange to most people but were common adventures for my boy that he was always getting into. Monday, 11.24 a.m. What's up, Roham? Thinking about copping the pig today. <laughs> Saw one on Craigslist for 20 bucks. You down? Monday, 7.24 p.m. Yo, got that pig, son. <laughs> he was wildin'. These two crusty rednecks had to shoot him with a tranquilizer gun and stuff him in the trash can for me. <laughs> they said, don't worry about the 20 bucks. That was just a wee out of riffraff. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Yo, I came home and Dr. Pignacious is missing. No clue where he went. If I find him, we're having bacon tonight. <laughs> this is a typical conversation we would have on a random Tuesday afternoon. I felt so lucky to have such a unique and awesome person in my life who was always down for anything. Whenever I was busy with work or school, I would turn him down for his latest escapade and he would always mockingly say, Live your life, dog. <laughs> and shoot up a peace sign with a silly smirk. In March, I was lucky enough to visit him in Austria and go snowboarding and traveling through Europe. Weeks leading up to the trip, I had been bragging and vastly overshooting my snowboarding skills. Drake called me out on it every second of the way. I'm a Florida boy, and me, you know, me and Snow, we get along about as much as Drake and an overpriced trinket. <laughs> with a vendor who's unwilling to have it. <laughs> face plant after face plant, we narrowly escaped death through some of the most beautiful mountains I've ever seen. Um, watching me struggle with what little bit of manhood I had left, I could tell he was genuinely happy I was experiencing all this for the first time. He took happiness and my happiness. He put me onto so many things, music, food, culture, anything that was off the beaten path he wanted more of. I'm proud to say I'm the man of today, because of the influence he had in my life. When most people think of what entertainment is, we think of movies, video games, or other mindless distractions that pacify our attention. Drake could have more fun walking through an unknown, unknown forest or a bush with his new favorite stick of choice, writing anything that would come in sight, singing his new favorite song he made up that very same day. There are so many things that, in life that come between us and the things we really want to do, and Drake just went ahead and did them anyway. I'll always admire him for that. If Drake's life had an itinerary, it would probably look something like this. One, jump off a waterfall cliff with a Hawaiian carpenter. Check. <laughs> Two, drink absinthe and roam through a Japanese garden at midnight. Check. <laughs> Three, eat more exotic foods. <laughs> Don't mind if I do so. <laughs> and go to more exotic places than the average person person can pronounce, check. Four, to be loved by anyone who is lucky enough to know him, check, check, check again. It's like his bucket list was so full there was just no room for anything else. If there is one thing in this whole experience it needs to teach us that we all need to live a little more, spend a little less time worrying, because as he would say, Drake, do it. <laughs> How to sum up Drake in a speech is not possible at all. I personally have known him since middle school and I can tell you this, there was never a dull moment with that man. He was more than a friend, but a brother to the absolute core. Everybody that he met, he touched, and we all know him through different ways, what an amazing person he was. I was fortunate enough to show him around Hawaii, which needless to say, he absolutely loved in every aspect. He loved the trees, the fruits, hikes, waterfalls, throwing things off high places, and eating all kinds of delicious food, which we all know he was very fond of. Um, Drake was a founding member of our crew that we had named BTL, which sounds, stands for About That Life. Um, Drake put the explanation point in uh, About That Life. 
He was passionate in absolutely everything that he did throughout his life. Jake really enjoyed blowing things up. So for special occasions, we started blow, blowing up large explosives for his birthday on 4th of July. The look on his face after blowing those things up was a similar look to when he would have exotic cheeses or getting a great deal on something is the best way I can describe it. I'm sure you guys all know that face. Um, as I started writing this, I started thinking about how much he had accomplished in his life. He had multiple properties, freedoms most people don't in the world never even dream of, and how much he took advantage of those things. I saw an opportunity, he saw an opportunity, and as he would say, own that shit. Um, uh, we would say, well, what about this? You know, what about the bills? What about that? And Drake's answer was always, Drake will be all right. <laughs> as I said, I wrote this, I started thinking of, uh, started thinking throughout life, the light that shines the brightest usually doesn't shine as long because of all the energy it uses in a shorter time. This is very much how I see Drake, how Drake's life was. Much like the dynamite that we had lit off, it had a short wick but was loud and bright and spread around in every direction. This is very symbolic of, of Drake to me. Drake was balanced with his thoughts, with his words, his passions, and everything else that made him who he was. He was always going somewhere, always bright, and always so full of life, it was like he was ready to explode. Although Drake's life wasn't as long as, as many others, it was absolutely full of excitement, adventure, and last but not least, exotic, delicious food. We had also went on a trip to Southeast, Southeast Asia, and let me tell you guys, one thing about Drake, the man loved the prices. <laughs> I didn't even know how to go about our navigation through these foreign countries, but Drake was a natural. That's what he loved. He had the whole trip planned out, found the best and cheapest places to stay, best food, train ticket, and the list goes on. He was truly driven by his adventure of life in every way. We went to the, one of the, the deepest caves in the world in Vietnam, rode motorbikes through the mountains in the countryside, climbed the highest mountain in Southeast Asia, and now that I look back at it, I was just riding the goat tails of Drake Diaz. Just like everything else in life, Drake was the first one to do everything. Heaven is just another place for me to solve touche. Uh, to, touche, my brother. We will see you when we get there. A little poem I found that I, I thought uh, that you guys might like is, uh, Miss me, but, not let, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun is set for me, I want no rights in the gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long. And not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that once we shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. As a part of the master plan, a step on the road home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends that we know. Laugh at all the things we used to do. Miss me, but let me go. The fearlessness always made me feel safe around Drake. 
Because of him, I went on a road trip through Spain and the most exotic place I've been, Morocco. Crossing into Africa sounded pretty sketchy, and if it was up to me, we would have never been on that ferry navigating the Strait of Gibraltar. Instead, I voted for hanging out in some nice, safe European country. I was pushing for Portugal. So glad he talked me into it. Without Drake, I wouldn't be a homeowner. Drake is the only person I felt comfortable enough to enter into a venture with. Who knew you could buy a house in an online auction for 10 grand? <laughs> with him, I went to my first real concert without adults. Although it did take me a few years, the first one he wanted to take me to was the Buzz Bake Sale, sixth grade. I ended up backing out because I was too intimidated. But he continued to encourage me and prepare me with Pantera tour videos. <laughs> After a couple years and tons of more invites, I remember belting to a cover of Pour Some Sugar on Me at a concert he brought me to. I still have the guitar pick. I also learned so much from Drake, as I'm sure we all did, about the world, exotic cuisine, fine liquors, delicate cheeses, the proper way to open a butterfly knife, new guns, old guns, big guns, little guns, African snuff. That is totally practical to have three different types of milk in the house. All of for cereal, goats for drinking, and neither was appropriate for coffee. That's where the third came in. Drake taught me that you can continue to function as a human being without cable. And I'm talking pre-Netflix and Hulu. That when scrambling to get a house spot livable, planting a fruit tree is a priority amongst the thing, million things you need to get done. One way to get your roommate to stop drinking milk is simply steal off, steal off that entire part of the house. <laughs> He also taught me to never stop learning and exploring. To never let anything get in the way of hanging with your mom or your grandma. To make friends with everyone everywhere. To still mountain bike knowing full well you'll be violently puking in eh, 30 minutes or so. <laughs> that customs regulations about what you can bring back in the States are merely suggestions. <laughs> and, <they're> kangaroo meat. <laughs> and kangaroo meat is surprisingly good. Jamaican cherries are amazing. And probably the most important, defining yourself as Fresca requires very little lifestyle changes. <laughs> Looking for anything good in this dark time, I did realize two things. Drake's hospital stay and falling ill firmly demonstrated that amongst these friends and this family, love, unity, and support flows wildly. The only thing I can compare it to is a dam breaking, with floods of positivity paralleling water rushing through cracked walls. The other more personal realization, is that quibbles and differences will occur, and to try not to waste any time repairing, because you never know when will be your loved one's last Taco Tuesday. <laughs> to close, I want to thank Tammy, Kafka, Perza, and Derek for performing such a unique, beautiful soul. I'm a firm believer that your parents and family shape who you are, and knowing Tammy, with her endless love and sweet selfless nature, Kafka, with his work ethic, work ethic, boldness in tackling any problem, and passion for hospitality, Derek with his travels, his altruism, and thirst for the exotic, and of course the matriarch, the glue, his grandma. With her stories of adventure, tales of always going your own way and following your heart. Thank you all so much for giving us Drake. It'll never be the same without him, but I can take a small amount of solace in knowing that the tales of Drake are plentiful, and we will continue to hear stories that are new to us, making us feel as if Drake is still here on Earth, but halfway across it, like we're so used to. <laughs> Goodbye, little bro, bro.
sorry, sorry, second dinners and geo party. Walking to our house, oh so fresca, only to indulge in Putinesca. From one pate to chill with Netflix, from time to time, continental breakfast. <laughs> How we you to pick your brain with thoughts profound and some insane? Man, the laughter and the joy, both of which you did employ. And both of which we did enjoy. Not to mention the dimples and smiles, appetite that stretched, that stretched a mile, adventure culture and life were your needs, such were the things on which you did feed. Along with meat, cake, bread, and cheese. <laughs> so many of those who loved you most, proud of whom you were to host. A morbid curiosity is what you always wanted to see, from monkey skulls to pigs on bikes to Bangkok and back eating Turkish delights. When you would run from time to time, our ears would perk up line by line. From two youths in Garrison Yard to hustling money and playing cars. At spades and chess, you put your stamp. The game of life, you were the champ. The tears will dry and healing scars, thinking of you amongst the stars. And even though you now are gone, the spirit we enjoyed still lives on. We'll think about you every day, and although it's not enough to say, appropriate you would attest. Shoot, she's bro, you are the best. I love you, Europe, for me, Africa, 
And while we didn't always link up when we lived abroad, we did in the States, and we'd always make time to travel together. Uh, whether it's a 5,000 mile trip through Scandinavia here, or going into disputed territories in the Caucasus there. We got a lot in, and we definitely became closer as we aged. Things he enjoyed, mountains, snow, cooking, cheese. God, that boy loved cheese more than almost anything. If you ever went to the grocery store with him, only Whole Foods or uh, ethnic grocery stores with spice, by the way. If you ever got lost, you know you could go to the cheese aisle and just find him standing there. Mm, humble fog goat cheese or celery smoked gouda? <laughs> He loved exploring, buying liquors, he enjoyed being the life of the party, but also his solitude. Uh, fireworks jumping off cliffs into bodies of water. He loved shooting guns, uh, sometimes accidentally shooting blanks indoors, and those stories usually ended in whoopsie. <laughs> Livestock. Uh, one time he and his friends went to the fair, and a few days later, he came home with uh, five baby chickens that he brought home in a KFC bucket and kept in his backyard for years. And we already covered the story with the pig he found on Craigslist. Um, he loved gardening and working on his trees, plants, and bushes. And he did love sitting outside in the rain with a, a drink and a book in hand. And a week ago, when he first got sick, it rained so fiercely that all the flights in and out of Florida were delayed. And I like to think that was him causing all that ruckus one more time. So as made evident by all of you here, Drake touched countless lives across the world. And just in this room, we have people from different backgrounds, cultures, lifestyles, and religions. And Drake had a way of bridging those barriers and making friends wherever he went. And even people who only met him once when we were traveling remember him fondly. And his home was always open to anyone. Any friend of a friend was welcome. And when he was in Florida, he would always make time for family, meeting my mom, grandma, and dad regularly for food or wine, or grandma juice as we call it. And uh, our extended family in Pennsylvania and Texas, when our uncle was in town, they always go to the shooting range and go get sushi after. And uh, speaking of people he made an impact on, one of the most important was his girlfriend, who we met 10 years ago in Denmark, uh, again, after fighting off three Danish guys at a party, defending his honor. Uh, so, <laughs> she said she remembers being too shy to speak with him in English, but having a lot of questions about his hair. And she would always wonder about that American guy over, over the, the next years. Uh, so, despite living on different continents, they had incredible bonds that they formed together over the last three years, and they'd always carve out weeks or months at a time to spend together. And uh, she said, even though they did a lot of traveling together, they have, they have a lot of plans for the future, and, you know, even though she can't imagine traveling without him, when the time comes and she's ready, she knows she'll go to those destinations, and she knows that he'll be there with her, just like he'll be there with all of us whenever we go on a trip. So he, he'd also call her a care step, which tra translates to my precious in English. And not unlike a woman or Lord of the Rings, he'd often speak in his own special manner. I mentioned he also spoke Danish. Uh, Drake loved knowledge and learning, and gets so excited to describe that history in detail of the Napoleonic Wars with the subtle distinction between a brandy and a grappa. He'd always give these long-winded answers that you'd re regret asking for, but you still love the way he told the story with a passion. So there are a lot of things that bother me now, a week later, of little things, um, like having to use the past tense, not being able to text in and make fun of something or someone, uh, knowing that when I want to go on a more extreme adventure, I have to search a little harder for a travel partner, driving to Pompadour and not just going into his house. It's as if he's on another adventure somewhere far away. And in a way, he is. So, what are we left with? Uh, his jokes, many of which I can't share here. <laughs> his impersonations of our friends, like one of his best friends, Mike in Austria, for example. I'd be like, oh, you go snowboarding today? Like, oh, no, Mike was being a baby. He's like, no, the powder's not good enough. <laughs> His recipes, his made-up songs, he loved to sing and rap about himself all the time. <laughs> Yo, let's break the snake, hit you in the back with a break. Woo! <laughs> so we're left with his advice to us about how to live life. More so than anyone else I've known, Drake lived such a high percentage of his life being happy and doing exactly what he wanted. He found the key to happiness, and despite his unorthodox methods, I think we all want to be a little more free-spirited like he was. So trying to rationalize all this the last week, uh, you know, 
you can't focus on the how or the why. Uh, I just keep telling myself that even about five lifetimes worth of experiences into his. And if anything, he just exceeded life's capacity. He inspired us all and taught us all how to be more adventurous in every aspect of our life. Living life to its absolute fullest. So, who cares if it's scary? Do exactly what you want. Start that business, buy that house, or sell that house to travel, visit that country, have that drink, try that food, go for that relationship, even if it's long distance. Eat that stinky cheese. Always eat that stinky cheese. <laughs> we only get one chance of life, and we need to utilize it like he did, or at least attempt to. So how would I sum up the life of Drake Diaz? Beautiful, spectacular, exquisite. <laughs>